everybody. Welcome to The Needle Bar. And today's topic, all things marrow, which pretty much means Matt set up and I get to throw popcorn. From yeah, you guys can see my fancy camera here. It means we're going to do some fun stuff today. That does. I so think. let's go ahead and jump into it. We've got, you've got some views, I think, set up, right? I got what? Some views set up, some cameras somewhere set up for today's live. Um, we do have TMG Custom Design checking in from Florida. Hello. And I say, let's get started, eh? Okay. Um, well, we didn't really plan this out a whole lot because we're trying to make this like a Q&A and kind of just the people had questions about the Merrill machine. So uh, yeah. feel free to ask them as you are um yep. oh yeah we should probably send the link to dj i did that oh you did okay cool yeah. at least one of us is responsible with our lives so um <laughs> lives i mean like facebook lives not like our livelihood lives but that's oh well i mean that too so we actually have dj showing up in the comments saying hello uh we have frank saying good morning suzanne absolutely you made it on time uh, Cindy King is good evening, and DJ is in sunny Chicago, which is not so sunny right now. It's pretty cold, actually. And we have Barb joining us from north central Minnesota, and that will catch us up on most of the comments for now. Um, I, I think that in order for the best video possible that you could make, Matt, you have to put the nerd star back on the camera. Uh, well, so. Because we planned this so well, I uh -huh. cut a bunch of patch blanks on black twill, but I have the Merrill machine set up for black thread. thread. So it's gonna Perfect. be a very boring video when you can't see anything. So we're gonna go ahead and swap it to uh, white a thread. Color. You uh, know what we should do? You should burn more, and an emphasis on burn. Um, you should burn more patch blanks. Uh, no, we are not going to do that today. <laughs> not today? Oh, not I'm again. looking forward to fire. No, I totally did not start a little fire in my laser. So uh, Again. Yeah. So basically what I'm going to do is I created some little uh, squares of twill. It's just one layer of our special uh, twill that we have on our website that you can get. And then I have two layers of cutaway stabilizer to make it a little bit easier. Uh, to actually marrow it when it's completely blank. And I just lasered a bunch of shapes. This one, the shapes look really funky because my laser was schizophrenic and decided to try to burn my house down again. Uh, luckily, it wasn't on a live this time. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and put some borders on some of these. But we need to change out our thread first. So let's see if this will work. Um... Back that out. All right. So Merrill machine um, has three different types of uh, thread that you need to run through. So you can have your upper, lower, and needle thread. And uh, so up here I have my three different um, spools pretty much. So this is going to be my needle. That's going to be my upper looper and my lower looper. Uh, there is actually a video on our YouTube channel. Um, of me showing you exactly how to thread it and everything. So if you want to learn how to do that, you can actually go to our YouTube channel and it step-by-step -step shows you exactly what eyelets to run it through, tensions and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm not going to focus too much on that unless someone asks. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out what color should we do. Should I do red, white? I could do gold. Let's see. That That's a good question for those in the audience. We'll see which ones they yeah. pick here. Yeah, so while that's that going on, I'll... we have had Jack join us from Michigan, and I am going to click two buttons here, and now I believe I can hear again. I muted it so that I could add um, the YouTube video for the Marrow, uh, the threading of Marrow MG3U. Um, I went ahead and dropped that in the comments, so. We have TMG Designs telling us gold. Mark Basalda is telling us red. And we have Frank. 
Barb, DJ, and Cindy saying, how many spools of thread to do the job and gold? And Mark asks, are all three threads the same weight? Gosh, Mark would have to ask the hard question. No, so there's <laughs> actually three different kinds of thread. Um, so you have, was it Tex 40, Tex 75, and then it's a 300 slash four or something like that. So that's the real marrow thread. Um, so the black that I took off, uh, this cone I just cut a little bit because it works better on my thing, but this is polyester 300-4 denier or denier uh and this is black so um this you can pretty much the best place to buy it is from tjstitch.com i believe that's his website so i actually got a whole new box of just this um same with this red one it's the same thing um however gold is going to be different because i don't have it in the proper spool so i'm going to be using regular embroidery thread uh, so I'm going to go get that because I totally just put it away for this live. Wherever <laughs> I did. And while Matt's doing that, I am adding links to everything we are talking about in the chat directly because I don't think we set up a links list for this one today. Uh, we did not. Um, oh yeah. So to answer the question, so this is going to be text 40 and I don't ever, oh, needle thread. It literally says on the label. So it's going to be, it's about the same thickness, kind of, but it's a lot stronger. So you can run a tighter tolerance. I don't Wh Which one's that use, one? What? Which one's that one? This is the needle thread. Tex? Tex 40. 40, which is about twice the size. Because I want to say that 40 weight thread is uh, like a Tex 20. Yeah. But it doesn't look like it's much thicker, but it is much, much stronger. Uh, you can run your tighter tensions, get a better um, overlock. However, that means you have to have three different spools, and, and a, you can't put it on your embroidery machine. I mean, you could, but you're not going to unless you are, then be my guess. But um, And then, yeah, here's the white. So this is Tex 45. Uh, this is for the lower looper, as I so wrote on it. Um, but, yeah, this is a much bigger spool, again, this is the lower looper is the one that's going to break the most if you're using regular embroidery thread. Um, cool. So that is the one I would recommend getting it uh, for sure. Um, but you saw me, I had three regular embroidery 40 weights on there. Um, and then, so we're going with gold. So I'm going to pull out my Filtech gold and I probably actually got to steal one from one of my embroidery machines. Luckily, those are easy to thread. Yes. Um, I don't know if I have any extras just laying around. Nope. I'll just go rob Peter to pay Paul. This is not the right one. See, if you guys would have picked red, I would be done by now. <laughs> they picked gold. We'll do gold. I'll throw virtual popcorn at you. Well, I have tweezers in my hand. I could throw virtual tweezers at you. So... Um, Jax Russell says, I often run embroidery thread in my needle to match the looper thread. Most of the time I leave black lower thread in. Yeah, I change them all out. I'm pretty OCD in particular about that. Okay, so um, I have found that when you're using these big spools, it kind of sucks. Uh, because there's a lip on the bottom, which then your sometimes your uh, thread will get stuck under it, and then it'll break the a needle or something like that. So I just pick it off and rip the bottom off, and then I take a piece of cardstock. So this is actually aside from the uh, Velcro spool, 
and I just cut it to size, cut it down the, the radium, and then, or radius, not radium, but that's something I was going to go with it. Yeah. And then when you set this on here, there's no gap, so it doesn't ever get stuck down there, and then you don't have any issues. Um, but if I'm doing multiple little threads, I don't need to worry about that. Uh, the other thing I need to worry about is not having enough platforms. So I use my old driver disc, or you can use your AOL disc from... I was going to say, if that was AOL, that would be perfect. Yeah, I don't have any more, unfortunately. So we actually have a question here. Um, and it is from D. What lower looper thread did y'all mention? I've been using 40 weight, but does not, not up often in break, which you said too, that it'll not up uh, and break a lot more if you use embroidery thread on your lower looper. Um, yeah, comment again. So I typically use 40 weight. Uh, it's very rare that I use my other stuff, uh, like very, very, very rare. Um, but there are certain brands that work better. Um, Gunold is, I typically don't have any issues with at all. Um, Filtech, I've had a few more issues than Gunold, but uh, Madeira, you cannot do a rayon very well. I that's not it's not fun. Um, but the polyester will work. What? Because it's rayon. It, it's yeah. got a lower breaking. Yeah, these machines go a lot faster. It's high tension, so yeah, that's a not not a fun time. So I have a question. While you're doing that, when you run your embroidery thread through, do you tie it together and pull it through like you would on an embroidery machine or do you actually run it through all the thread path oh i'm gonna pull it through or tie it through tie and pull it through gotcha ain't nobody got time for that <laughs> do you ever forget how to thread your marrow um i don't remember how to do it which is why i recorded that video <laughs> then I don't really have an issue because I just go back and watch it. So Barb has a question and I think I can answer this one is, are you using rayon thread? And I'm going to say no. Uh, and Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were using five spools of um, Filtech polyester. What do they call it? The triobial polyester thread. Yeah. And it's five eight. spools or seven. Um, it is probably going to be six, actually. Okay. I, I found that I can sometimes get away with just doing four on the the upper looper now, um, it, depending on what cam I'm using. So I don't even know which one I have in right now. I have the 20, it looks like, or the 28. Half of it's cut off, so I can't tell. Um, but we can so talk for about those that. of us that don't know what the cam does, Jeff is going to explain. Oh, okay. I can explain that. Um, the cam is basically how many stitches per inch it does. So a 28 cam is 28 stitches per inch, where a 20 cam is 20 stitches per inch. So the higher the number on the cam, the more times it's going to go into the material. Yeah, it's basically just adjusting the feed dog and how many times it's going to pause oh, your material. Cycle. Yeah. Cyclical. So you've got four on the floss, one on the upper and one on the lower. Correct. All right. I'm just making sure I got this because popcorn. All right. We're going to take this guy out. So I don't find um, um, the one because it just goes bright white. But that's the fun part. This is why I need to buy more cameras. If you would like to go and buy Matt a new camera... Yeah, they're only, you know, like a lot. We'll go to, I'll drop in links.embnerd.com. You can click on that. We have a buy us a coffee link. <laughs> it should be one really expensive coffee, right, Matt? Yeah. I think the lens was like 900 and the camera's like 1400 or something like that. So Something crazy. Yeah. yeah. A little nuts. All right. So here we go. So again, just for, um, I'm using six of these right now. Um, I don't know what cam I'm using, but I can show you guys in a little bit. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull 
the tail through so that I can change the color out, but it is hiding. Okay, here we go. Pull that out. Give me some slack. The thing on, no, it's not on autofocus. Good. Click. Then, so that was the needle. Now I'm going to do the lower looper. Again, I have a full video on how to do all this and set up the tensions on the face or the YouTubes. Yep. On I the posted yep. a, uh, a link to that earlier. So you can scroll up if you need to see that after this show. Close this up. And then get this extension cord out of the way. <laughs> So here's a random question. When you change from marrow floss to embroidery thread, do you have to retention the machine? Um, normally you do. Mine, I have it set kind of in an in-between, so I get okay results on both. Um, but I'm going to run a test through anyways. So an example of that is, so this is the sheet. I don't know I'm showing you on the macro lens. Here you go. <laughs> uh, so I cut out a bunch of shapes. This is scrap, right? But the beauty of it is I can do this. And now I got a piece to test on. So well, I'll actually give myself a straight edge because that's not. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to run this through and I can test and see what my. Um, Hold on. I'm going to blow this up here to the solo layout. OK, that should be good. And because I don't need to run the whole thing through, I'm just going to cut it after when I should have did that before. <laughs> All right. So it's covering. It looks good. I'm not worried. If I was, I'd just adjust the, the dials, but we're not going to worry about that. Okay. Um. So since the video is titled Tips and Tricks because I was flying and not able to fight the title, um, a tip that is also in that video, just in case you're uh, wondering, if you need to adjust the, the tensions on the, the machine, I just do it like this. So let's pretend I adjusted it, and then I just run it through the other side. <laughs> All right, and I didn't like that, so then I adjust it again, and then all you do is turn it around, cut the other end off. Just like that, and now I have it where I like it. And you just keep doing that until it's smaller and smaller, and you throw it away and grab your next piece of scrap. So. No, no questions yet. Oh, and you get a little keychain too then. Hold on. Hold it up again. Okay. It's very, very cool shape. I'd say if you we could do a contest to see if you wanted to win it, but that's kind of a little silly. If, if I wanted to win the contest? Yes, if you wanted to win it. Yeah. I would probably win, yes. All right. What do we got? Any questions yet? Not yet. Okay, um, so let's see. So I got a couple shapes here. So I have an oval one. Uh, these were just blanks that I cut out. I should have done them in white. Uh, and the reason for that is because we're selling white twill as well on our links uh, that Jeff posted above, uh, which is really awesome because you can get them marrowed and then you can sublimate them um, or do other cool stuff or use it for patches. Like that's what we got it for, but it's also really good for sublimation. All right. So Barb asks, do you have to do adjustments each time for marrowing? So typically I don't need to because I'm almost always doing Velcro on the back, which I'll demonstrate that too later. Um, and I'm all, almost always using the same type of thread. I'm almost always using black. Uh, I'm either using black or I'm using a, a brown. Um, so I just set it up for one of them and then I run a test, just one test. 
if it's good, then I do all a couple hundred patches. Okay. And yeah. Mark says, so fast, so many patches. Hey, I sent you a link to buy your own. This is the... <laughs> I even got you a discount. Um, so the presser foot, there's a foot pedal to lift that up. And I can show you that. It's just like a regular sewing machine. Uh, mine didn't come with it. So mine's actually made out of wood. And a, well, it's actually a chain now because Jeff had an extra one that he gave me. Before it was fishing line and it kept breaking. Uh, so this is much better. Uh, choice mine. I also upgraded the motor so that it will stop the needle in the up position. So you can see the tip is right here. If you don't have that fancy servo, it will just stop wherever you let the foot pedal go. So it makes it a lot quicker for me. Um, actually saves a lot of time in the long run. Jack um, asks, did you convert your MG dash three UV or buy it like that? So mine was an MG three U. I had issues with it, so I sent it to Mero and said I wanted to do Velcro with it because I saw that you could do that. And like, oh, well, you upgrade it to the, the V model. So that's what I, I did. So I did upgrade it. It was $300, I think, or close to that. It was like 250 280 or something to get it reconditioned at their factory. And then they upgraded it for, I think, a little under $300 or something. What they upgraded, I don't really know. Because um, we looked at... We looked at Jeff's and mine because his is not, and we were thinking it was the feed dogs, but they look exactly the same. So I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, mine is also slightly more modified because I took parts of the guard off and I, I have like no guards on the side. Um, and if you think that's sketchy, you should see my other one, which I could show later. Uh, so Jack says they told me the needle plate and needles. Yeah, so the needles, I know that so these gold ones are titanium coated. Um, so they're supposed to, because the heat from going through the Velcro really fast. Uh, so that's supposed to help. Otherwise, you're just going to have your standard, uh, what is it, chromium or whatever. that Chrome plated. Yeah, chrome plated. Uh, so that'll help. The needle plate, you can buy different ones. So I don't really know why that would be considered a different model. I mean, you're probably right. I'm just saying it doesn't it doesn't really make sense to me why they would call it a V when you're just replacing a like a needle plate on your embroidery machine. You don't call it something else. But I mean it could be. Whatever. We don't know. Um, oh, hold on, I got, I'm pulling it up. Mark asks, so MG3 UV for patches, not just an MG3 U. So what's the so, difference between a V and a U? The, the V is Velcro. That's it. Again, what they changed, do not officially know. I've reached out to the, the owner of the company and hasn't really given me a solid answer. Uh, Jack is probably right. They just sell you like a different kit with the different parts because I haven't seen any physical difference and it doesn't operate any differently from what I've seen. So the V essentially is you can sell Velcro onto your patch at the same time. Yeah, but you can still do it without it. So I don't know. Okay. It's just not designed for it. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do this. Um, so it's basically I'm just going to run it around. I have the depressor foot on, so it's probably going to be a little bit harder. Um, because you got to adjust how fast you're going in the, the corners here. So I'm going to have to lift it up as I go around. Um, so that's right from them in the email, needles, cams, and needle plates. So it's probably the cams that are more difficult to change. Yeah. But sorry. Um, so I'm going to run this around. So now i got to lift it because it's going to go too fast. And I need that density. So when you, you're hitting the tighter turns, you're lifting, raising the presser foot. That is correct. Otherwise, it's going to it's gonna go too fast. I'll, I'll do it without doing it um, on the next one so that you can see. And uh, so I never did this shape before. 
So you got to do a little bit slower. Once you do about like 10 of them or so, then you kind of get the muscle memory on how to do it. So you can get a lot quicker, but that's what it looks like. So now I'll do it without lifting the presser foot and it's probably going to jack it all up. And there you go. All right. So Cindy asked, if you were going to put on heat seal, when would you do it? Uh, so heat seal, um, I typically do it before I cut the patches. So I'll embroider it um, and I'll put it in the heat press. I'll press it once and then I'll get the, the iron on, uh, put that on and then uh, fuse it to that and then I'll cut it out in my laser um, after I peel the backing off because then you don't have to sit there and you have to peel the backing off of a couple hundred patches uh, don't ask me um, <laughs> yeah. um, it also sucks when you cut them all out and then you have to put the heat seal on um, for the most part depending on what type of heat seal you're using um, you gotta see if it's gonna slide on your the plate here um, if it's going to not slide, then you might want to do it after the fact. Um, I use the, the purple heat and bond stuff primarily, uh, cause I can buy it from my local sewing, um, place for, uh, pretty cheap. Otherwise I use the gun old BSN, which also works great. That's your very high tack adhesive. But, so D says, yeah, I've gotten away with doing Velcro on my regular MG3U. Need to play with tensions a bit, though. So, Yeah, so that's going to be, yeah, you're going to have that, that little issue there. But, uh, yeah, so basically the key thing is just making sure that you do the, I imagine this is going to be a little bit easier to, I don't know. But uh, let's see. There we and go. And Cindy says, that's what I was wondering, sticking on the plate. And TMG says, we need a video of Matthew adding heat seal. Well, maybe we can do that later. I think we should start doing more of these project videos too, but uh, on lives. But I don't know what you guys think, because we always do digitizing, but we need Jack to rock. Says, I find it sometimes helps to wait a day after heat sealing to marrow. It dries a bit more. Yeah, I don't wait. I don't have time. <laughs> I, I, I take in orders and then I just let them sit. And then the week before they're due, then I stay up all night. And uh, I mean, he totally does them way ahead of time. No. <laughs> I mean, so actually, I was going to Im or Velcro and Merrill all of those. But uh, you can tell they are currently. Uh, well, now I got the light in there. Uh Currently on there, they're not cut, and I never cut the Velcro out, so ain't gonna happen. And I have another 200 patches on the machines to do. So um, I have another shape. Um, I'm gonna do this one without the presser foot. That is a weird shape. Yeah, it was literally, I just used the draw tool. Okay. Um, so again, I'm gonna start it. And I screwed this one up a little bit, but again, it's weird shape. First time doing it, so I don't have the muscle memory. Um, oh, and I just lifted the presser foot for some reason. Get it out of the way. All right, and I'll just keep it here. So yeah, it's basically... It's going to be easier to do weird shapes without the presser foot. So you got to learn how to do that. Um, again, I went around the corner a little too fast because I didn't put enough pressure to keep it from pulling. The feed dogs are going to pull it regardless, unless if you set them to be less aggressive, which is really easy to do. But um, 
So I have a question, Matt. You started that one on one end, and the oval you started on the long flat end. When you're getting ready to marrow a patch, how do you decide where you're going to start and where you're going to stop? So when I do it, I try to do it on the bottom, or I try to do it where it's going to be not as noticeable. Um, so I can grab some examples. And then I think I have one more over here. All right, so this was a patch I did, and... You got to uh, hold it back closer to the presser foot. Well, that's... Uh, let's see. So you can see right there on the bottom, I have it. Um, because you're not going to be... You're, well, this design, you're looking at you know the center of it, but I have it hidden there. If I do it on the, the side, your eyes typically draw towards the top, so I kind of hide it at the bottom. This one, I'm hiding it over here because you're going to read the text and then it just ends there. Um, it's just kind of from whatever. And then this one I hit over here. A lot of them I hide on the like the, the five o'clock position, four or five. Um, and then square patches, uh, it's typically I start on the, the bottom corner here because then it's just, a, it's just spinning it around pretty much and then you're done. Um, and that's pretty right. much it. If so we have a question, Matt. Jack says, so you hold it down on the feed dog or the needle will keep it down without using the foot. So when you're so if you have your patch thicker, so that's why I did two layers of stabilizer. You can hold it down on the side and it will kind of keep it um, it'll keep it down. Um, but the other uh, issue with that is so if you notice i didn't start on the very end i went in a little bit because if i cut that off that's why you should save your scraps because it's something to practice on if i do it like this um especially if i do it on my other machine i'm probably going to break the needle this one i probably won't but we'll see So that one was fine, but if I did just a single layer of stabilizer and twill, if it's a lot more flexible, that's where you're gonna have issues. It's gonna it's gonna pull it up with the needle, um, but because it's thicker, I don't really have that. Um, I could probably pull one layer off, maybe. Let's see. Well, I can pull one layer of the one layer off. It's two ply. There, I made a book. Okay, so let's try this one. So that one didn't do it. Started a little different. Um, but you can tell that the stitching completely changed. It's a lot denser because the uh, the feed dog and the basically how much material is there versus this side where it actually looks a lot better. I didn't change any other settings. It's just I changed the uh, um, the the thickness of the material. So that's where you might have to do something. Now, if I add Velcro to it, then I would have to check it even more. But all right, Matt, is that embroidery nerd twill you were using? Yes, it is. That was all my questions. Um, and then here's a circle one. I'm going to put this back on because it is way faster. And so if you're wondering why do I need a marrow machine? Because I can do a satin border. Well, uh, let me get this tail out of the way. All right. So you can run a, this is, I don't know how big, a one and three quarter or something. I literally just drew it in uh, light burn. Uh, race me with your satin border on your embroidery machine. Done. 
and you muted yourself. I did, and you didn't say go. Well, you weren't going to go run over there anyways. But, yep, so that's it's pretty quick to do it that way. I can do, um, I, I forgot what the, the thing, we raced or timed it. It was like 50-something patches in, what, 15 minutes or something? Yeah, you did a crazy Thank number. You. Yeah, I don't know. It's been a while. But that's if it's a circle. If it's a rocker patch, like uh, like this one, uh, that's where I'm going to use my other machine. Um, but you can't do Velcro at the same time because it will break the needle. Don't ask me how I know. So, Matt, how do you know that? That's how I know. Um, all right, so I got a rectangle with rounded corners. Uh, this is one that took me forever to figure out. Um, so I'm going to do it exactly like I would do a name patch for any uniform. So I'm going to start in the center. I'm not going to start on the end because um, then you're going to have it bunching up on the end and it's going to look weird. Um, so if this was embroidered, I personally do it on the bottom of the text or on the bottom of the patch. A lot of other people do it on top. I don't like it on top. I think it looks weird. Um, but I'm just going to go through. And then I'm going to lift it. Manually turn it. And by lift it, you mean lift the presser foot. This one didn't turn out very good, but... But I'm also on camera, so it's never going to turn out because I'm doing it live. Uh, so like this little gap here, I can just fan the thread out. Bam. That's solved. Again, muscle memory. After a couple of them, you do a lot better. Um, let's see. So when you start, like, let's say you're going to do, you know, 200 patches. Do you ever um, cut just some blanks to run them through first to try and get your muscle memory built up before you run the rest of them? If it is a funky shape, yeah, I can. Because um, typically, um, I'll make a few mistakes. If it's a really funky shape, it's probably about 10% is going to go weird. And then sometimes, once in a while, you'll get uh, some either a bad spool or something, and it'll uh, break your thread. And actually, I can demonstrate how I fix that, too. But D asks, right foot presser foot pedal, left foot motor pedal? So that's what it normally is. Mine is backwards. So when I ran Jeff's for the demonstration, uh, it was very clunky because my gas and brake were wrong. Gotcha. But. And Jack says, I need to work on turning corners. So let me swap so, cameras here. I got this guy here. Um, by the way, I think uh, hexagons make really cool patch shapes because uh, you can make different designs and they kind of lay together like a board game. Uh, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to start on the tip because I don't want to, you don't want to have to turn a whole lot. So I already have to turn what, six times. I don't want to have to turn seven times. So I'll just run it. I can actually keep it going and then bring it in. And then when I get to the end, I went just a little bit past, pull it just off and then I'm going to start it again. And then, well, I got my tail caught in the, <laughs> the marrow. So, oh, there's up. And then that's that shape. So it's pretty simple. Pretty simple shape. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated because it's a few more starts and stops. Um, but basically, I can I can show exactly how you do the corner too. Um, so, so Suzanne I, has a question, Matt. How much space on the patch do you allow for the Merrill Edge? So that is actually adjustable. Um, mine, I 
think it's like three, uh, 3.5 millimeters or something I typically do. Um, basically, that changes with the needle plate, right? The needle plate changes the width. Yeah, so you can change that. And then mine has this little, I don't know what to call it. It's a little thumb basically is what I call it. There's a screw that's on the side right here that you can adjust. You loosen that and then, um, actually, no, not that one. It's on the front because uh, this will loosen it so you can lift it. The one on the front, you can actually slide the entire thing left and right uh, so that that way you can use like a straight um, or you can you can use it to do th straight edges and you can determine your width. So you have to adjust the, the needle plate, which I have a couple different ones. Um, and then, yeah. But my other machine, my other marrow does not have this. It does not have, it's, it's pretty scary looking. Um, I don't have much experience with it just because I haven't had to do the patches with the rockers a whole lot, but, um, I am going to move the camera in, so we'll keep it off. I don't want to make people sick. So do we have any cool questions? No. <laughs> Think of um, D says, Jack, practice dragging corners on, dragging on rounded corners. It took a while to get used to how it feels. Uh, Mark says, it seems simple to do with lots of practice. I'm apprehensive because the three needles seem intimidating. Also, they don't run off a full motor, uh, full table slash motor design drive. So mine is actually, um, well, it's back there. It's a helmsman table. So it's only two feet wide instead of the full four feet wide table that Matt has. Um, and it only has one needle and two loopers. So there is only one needle, and as I I can attest to, uh, I usually only ever break the needles. <laughs> I haven't broke a looper yet. All right, so this is going to be very fun to do. I've I did this for the video, but it's not <laughs> it's not fun. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, what am I looking at here? Let's press the The joy of a macro lens. It's like very fine tuned. Okay, there we go. So I'm like reaching around someone it feels like, uh, but here we go. So what I'm gonna demonstrate now is going to all these corners. Um, and yeah, that's, and how exactly, how far I'm gonna go. Um, so I can't even hit my presser foot. Here we go. So that was actually not the right shape I should have used. Because <laughs> we will grab the square. There we go. Now we'll actually do it. All right, so I'm stopping... Um, right at the, can I get this guy out? All right, so there's about like one more uh, loop I would be able to do on it. And see, I stopped right before the edge. Um, so I could have probably got two more loops in it. And basically, um, I'm just, just turn it, I back it off. When the machine runs, you'll kind of hear a little click. That's when the the thread comes off the, the upper looper and it like slips to the backside. You'll hear that little audible click. Um, and then I'm going to bring it and I'm going to manually rotate it, not by using the motor, but the, the wheel. And then I basically drop it just in it on the edge. And then uh, and right there, actually, you can see how it, it picks it up. That's what I was talking about. If you use really thin material, it's going to flag it and it's going to rip it up and you're going to break the needle or pull your finger in or something like that. Um, again, I have all the guards taken off, but we're going to run this through. OSHA approved. And then, so right there, I'm going to drop it once more. There's the click. Bring it around. Drop it in. 
And so, yeah, I'm not looking at it from the right angle, so I can't really tell exactly how far I am. But this is still fixable. You just kind of pick it around. Um, if you really have sharp corners, you can kind of nip them with the scissors to make it 45 at the very end. That's kind of a little cheat you can do, too. Um, but that is one way to do it. All right. So Suzanne asks, is there a trimmer blade like on a regular serger? So there is the capability or um, right, which tr like a trimmer for the thread or for like the material? Material. Material. Yeah. So there is one that you can have. I don't have it but it goes on the slot right here. And apparently you replace this thumb with it. Um, and then it'll cut the excess material and it'll fall off the side here. I don't have that. Um, I do. I don't know if I would use it anyways, but. No, <laughs> I wouldn't use it. Um, I have it and it made things a lot more difficult. Yeah. So the one thing that I've learned is that using uh, the laser cutter to make these blanks, makes it way easier because you have a nice clean edge if you cut it by uh just using a scissors even if you have like i always do a, a run stitch last to show me what my final original shape should be and that's what i laser cut it but if i'm like don't want to set the laser and i just cut it with the scissors it is not straight and then the thread is going to be resting on that so it's going to find that spot and then it's going to make it irregular and uh uh, usually my customers can be like, well, it doesn't look very circular. Is it going to be better in the production? It's like, yes, that's because I cheated for the sample. But yeah. Move my... So yeah, um, let's see. What else were we going to do? I still want to show Velcro. We looked at weird shapes. I have this really funky shape that I'm not going to do. <laughs> oh, I guess I could have just flipped them over and done it on the the stabilizer. Shh. Didn't think of that. Um, so know, Suzanne says, so you're saying I need a laser. Uh, does your significant other say you don't? Because in that case, you definitely do. Everyone needs a laser, and everyone needs a fire extinguisher by their laser. <laughs> if you go back, I think there's, I think I have a short link to it. I don't know. I might. But I may have had an incident in my laser, which caused me to go and purchase a fire extinguisher the next day. Online. During a live. During a live. And before this one, I had a slight mishap. But that's, <laughs> um, all right, so that's kind of the patch blanks. I have like other shapes too, but like this one, uh, this was also during the fire, uh, which is why it was supposed to be that circle, but that I would do on the other machine because getting it into this corner here uh, that I don't have pulled up and this, you can't see it anyways. So getting it into this corner is going to be hard. Like, obviously, you saw me do the circle. That was really easy. You just spin it around. But when you get it to here, you have to run this through. Um, so basically, I'd have to run it like this, which is fine for that part. But now I got to turn it into the machine. And that's really hard to do. Um, so that's why doing angles like that are not fun. And that's why I buy the other machine that I have, which is way scarier. Um, so I'm not going to do that one on live because I need to practice with that one more before I put it through my finger on live. Um, so I think what we're going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to cut this patch out. We're going to sew some or put Velcro on it. I'm not going to change the color up because we're not going to have a lot of time. Yeah, and I'll run just, it. we got about 10 more minutes. Yeah. So I'm just going to cut it out with scissors, even though I said I don't ever do that but these are not going to be passive for sale. Um, so 
So this is where Jeff goes over announcements instead of just being quiet. So announcements we have are a virtual applique getaway is coming up. We'll be teaching you that. We also have the uh, Printing United show going on right now. Um, after that is going to be the virtual applique getaway. And then we're going to have the um, Impressions Expo in California. So those are the trade shows that are coming up. Uh, there were Reggie nomination announcements. Um, so you can go to the Reggie's Awards for two regular guys and nominate your uh, favorite people in the community. So I would recommend doing that as well. How much more time do you need me to fluff your mat? That should be good. All right. I was giving you uh, some. some uh, so Velcro, um, how I used to do this is I would hold it like this. Um, what are you doing? You're going to make everyone sick. And then I'd use a little binder clip and then I would do it that way. I'd start it and take it off. Um, the problem that I don't like doing it like this is, well, then I have a clip that I always lose. Um, uh, and actually, you can clip it right onto the front of the Merrill machine, too, which actually works. Uh, but when you have the edges all bordered up and everything, it'll still flex. And then you'll get that little, um, you'll yeah. get little like flex in the middle. And I don't like that. It's really annoying. So what I do is a company that I do not have stock in that I should, which is 3M. They have Super 77 spray. It is very uh, adhesive. I, yeah, it's it's you shouldn't spray it indoors. Um, I'm going to and I always do. Uh, but yeah, I spray it on the Velcro and then I lay it onto the, the patch. And then sometimes I'll even just lay it in the heat press without it on and then just press it while I'm getting the next batch um, all glued up. And then I take those out and I put all the glued ones in. And then that way it's completely um, pressed and then I can marrow it. And no, for uh, those that are wondering, using the Super 77 on the marrow machine does not gum it up, um, at least from my experience, because uh, I typically do it right away. Um, I've heard that if you let the Super 77 set for a little bit, it kind of gums it up because uh, you can actually use it on your embroidery machines. Uh, well, on uh, I used to use it to put the Velcro on and then sew the the actual placement or the the actual securing stitch with the embroidery machine. But if you let it sit, then yes, it would gum the needle up. So I do it right away. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this real quick. Um, and I got a nice Chipotle box that the wife brought. Um, it is about an eighth inch thick of super 77 on the bottom of it because i've been using it for about a year and a half now i imagine if i threw that thing in a fire it would explode so yeah don't throw it in a fire don't store it in your laser exactly so again super 77 that's this stuff right here it's great buy it at any home improvement store I didn't clean the tip off of it, so it's going to be very stringy. It's a little bubbly, but I don't care. Again, this is just for a demonstration. Um, and then I'm just going to stick it on there. While it's still a little tacky, you can kind of slide it around. Uh, the nice thing about doing Velcro and cutting it with the laser, too, is that now you have a straight edge. Uh, like I said before, if you cut it by scissors, you're going to get the little bumps. Um, but I should not have that because my Velcro is a little bit wider than this. So it should be pretty good. So let's go. So again, because this is not a name patch, um, I'm going to start at the very corner and I'm just going to run it through. And here we go. I broke the thread. Yay. So I was going to demonstrate one. that, but I was going to do that later. So um, I guess the universe was like, nope. Um, so what I'm going to do is basically I touch it right here and then I can tell that my lower looper thread broke. I guess you can't see it, but I'm touching it on the front. So um, one of these days we'll have more lenses and camera views and stuff like that. We're just uh, waiting for Matt to move to uh, Iowa by the end of calendar year, year 2023. Yeah, that's not what our contract said. Oh, yeah, and Justin hasn't seen it yet. 
I'm pretty sure it's twenty ninety nine in the contract. Well, yeah, that was modified by one person, which is not me. Oh, and that's the backwards tweezers. All right. So now. Let's try this again. All right. So because I didn't get very far, I can kind of just rip it off and be good. Seam Ripper is your best investment for this. All right. And we'll try it again. DJ votes that Knoxville is a better location. What was that? DJ votes that Knoxville is a better location. I mean, it might be, but let's be real. I am not able to move. And then when I get to this last stretch, I always start it just a little bit so it's secured in the machine. And then uh, it all depends on who you are. If you watch videos from China, they don't stop and cut the tail. I'm very um, anal about my marrowed borders, so I do that. Uh, they just run it straight off into the same tail that they started with. Um, sometimes you'll see me in videos where I'll actually pull the tail from the back onto the front and I'll hold it and then I'll run it off and then I'll just cut it once. Um, and I do that because it's very easy for me to take the, it's called the squeezers and then I can cut it on the front um, when I'm checking all the patches for just uh, making sure that they're all good. Uh, depending on how I'm gonna do it. Yeah, that thing, the best tool ever. Okay, and that's that. And then the next last step is to actually secure it. So this border is not done very well. Uh, you can see it, it looks really crappy on the backside. That's because I didn't adjust the tensions. Um, videos are on YouTube by us for that. But how to sec secure this? If you don't have Velcro and you're sewing it on, you don't really need to do anything with it because you just put it on the backside when you sew it onto a uniform. Um, if you have Velcro, I'm gonna heat it up and melt it. If you're sewing Velcro after the fact, then I just stick it on the inside, then sew the Velcro on the same as if it was a uniform. Uh, but I don't know where my lighter went, so I have to go find another one. So fire is always fun. I'm just gonna take it, light it on fire, and then and then just tack it on the inside, just like that, secured. Uh, the last thing that I typically do to all my patches is I have a, a heat gun and I just heat all of it and it just kind of sucks in the, the threads just a little bit. Um, like right here, it's a little loose. You can also do it with the lighter, it'll get rid of some of the frays, but I just like using the heat gun. But that's pretty much how to do it with Velcro too, with in regulation colors. Actually, it doesn't look that bad, but. Um, I don't know if we have any other things that we're gonna go on about this. Um, I think I, that's, a, that's a good wrapping point and we can always do a part two if people have more questions or comments. Uh, let me click a couple buttons here. There we go. Um, yeah, I think this is a good stopping point right now. Or I could do one more bonus thing. Ooh, what's the bonus thing? I don't know, but we need one more like. One more like. <laughs> one more like. One more to pat my back. To one make more to pat back. your back, a like, a heart, um, a, a circle. Uh, so I was going to demonstrate it after the fact. Okay, we got it. Sweet. Uh, so now I'll do it. Um, the thread break in the middle of a patch. So what I'm gonna do is Jeff's gonna bring it back up and let's say you're going um, and... Okay, well now I'm close to the edge. I was trying to break it intentionally. 
It's because you're trying. It's not going to break. Okay, there we go. So I held the, the lower looper thread to intentionally break it. So let's say I didn't want to sit there and seam rip all of it, uh, which, by the way, doing it on the backside and getting it underneath the lower looper thread is the best way to do it. Um, and then it'll just come apart. But I want to pick it back up right there. So what I'm going to do is pull um, this back through and open that up so I get some room. Trim it clean. If you have issues with doing this part, you can always take off this screw right here, feed it through, feed it through the lower looper, put it all back together. That's how I did it for the first like two years until I just happened to get the hang of it. Also, if your lo loopers are not bent in the right angle, it's very hard to do this, uh, which is also another fun tip. If you only have one set of loopers with it, they are breakable and pretty fragile. So I would highly recommend calling up Marrow, ordering another set um, because you have to bend them to your machine. Um, so I bought a spare set um, and then these were still good. I took them out of my machine and then I compared the new ones with it and I bent the new ones to that so I have backups that are ready to go. Because otherwise you have to sit there and there's this funky tool. Um, right here that you use and you have to bend everything and it's just, it's a pain. So do it beforehand. Don't be like Jeff. <laughs> uh, so then I'm gonna run it again. I'm gonna make sure that I get this thread out of there. All right, so my tail is good. Uh, the reason why I do, I do that is because if you're lazy and you don't look at your thread spool, when I was talking about how you have that big cone, maybe it got underneath it or you have a knot in it because the manufacturer, it was the start of a new spool that they wound onto it. So there's not, it got stuck or something. Um, so if it doesn't look right coming off, then check that, but I'm good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start like two or three loops up and then I, oh, and actually I'm gonna cut it. Um, So it's going to have a little bit of a tailor, but I'm going to clean that up anyways after the fact. Uh, so I'm just going to drop it in manually once and then go. All right. And that's not too bad. Again, you're just going to have two tails. So you're going to have the, this tail, and then you're going to have the tail where you started. So you just got to make sure you keep both of them um, and melt both of them, otherwise it's going to unravel. Um, All right. So I like this tip here. Align the upper looper to the needle hole. That usually aligns the lower looper to that thread hole. I did not know that. I just twisted it until it shoved through. And Suzanne says, I use a dental floss threader to serve to thread my serger. So that's also an option that I've never yeah. heard of and or used before. The way that I do it, yeah. So what uh, he said about using aligning your, your needles up here, when I back it out, I just go until I find about the lowest spot where it sticks all the way out here. Cause I can, you can see it moving. So right, right there, I could get it straight through if I just push it through right now, because I have bent mine to that spot. If it is not bent in that spot, then yes, you're gonna have to figure out exactly what it is. Okay. Uh, and then let's see, I think that's probably good, but we talked about this before, um, the, the cams. So these are your eccentric cams. There's a little number that's embossed on the side. So this one is a 28, so I'll get 28 stitches per minute or inch. This is also 28. I don't know why I have two of them. Um, and then there are needle plates. That is not the needle plate, that is a guard. Oh, it's right here. Uh, so here is a wide needle plate. So I can get a much wider stitch. I have the medium on right now. And there's a narrow one as well. But, and that's pretty much the gist of it. 
And if you want to know what needles they are, we're going to put all the goodies in here. Um, they are four BDs, and they are empty. But they're and curved. titanium. Yeah. So, yeah, they're pretty special needles. You can get them. Um, you can buy them straight from Merrill. Um, I forgot where I got mine online, but... Uh, here is what one looks like outside. This is a titanium one. Uh, the lighting doesn't really make it look like it. And these are non-titanium ones. So if you're starting, I would recommend getting these because they're a lot cheaper and you'll probably break a couple. Um, if you're doing Velcro, um, I've only broken the non-titanium ones in it. Um, oh, and here's a 14. Uh, SPI cam. So that one will give you a really dense border. Um, but so wait, is it the lower the number, the more stitches or the higher the number? the more? Or, stitches? Yeah, sorry. I just said that backwards. Yeah. So okay. I, mine came with the 28. Um, so that means I'm using my 20 cam. Um, I had the 28. I was using uh, this thread, which is supposed to be what four strands of like re your regular 40 weight or something like that. Something around that. I don't know. It's pretty thick. Actually, it's going to be more than that because it's pretty thick. Um, I'm not an expert, but it's my basically when I bought this machine, I got it used. It's a refurbished machine, which is why it's red. Um, fun fact. But it was set up with a 28, the really thick thread, and my borders were just coming out way too um, dense, and I couldn't figure out exactly what it was. So that's why I sent it in, and then they worked with me, and now... Figured it out a couple of years later, and here we are. So I think that's all I got. So unless other people have any um, questions. All right. Well, we'll wait for that to come through a second. Um, I think next week we're doing digitizing, uh, if I remember right. Um, I don't remember what we're digitizing, Matt. I think that's going to be in something completely brand new. Yep, it's not going to be in Wilcom, but we'll throw out a, uh, what do you call it, a post? Yeah, we'll make a post uh, before then, so you guys can all see that. Um, and we'll see, uh, Jack here has a comment that says, I made a set of patches with different cam sizes, so that way you know. Yeah. That's a pretty good way to visually have a reference. You can look at it and go, okay, well, this is the one I want for this material. So, um, other than that, Matt, I think that's pretty much it. I don't have a, I don't, I already went through the news once. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there's really much to say other than, uh, we have our links list that was posted up above or Jeff's going to type it in real quick. Uh, we got the, the discord channel on there, which is really awesome. Join that. It's a lot of fun. Um, uh, but you didn't put HTTPS in it, so it's not going to be clickable. Really? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, but yeah, so we're going to have, there's a lot of links in there. You can follow us on our Facebook page, the group, YouTube. Uh, you should go subscribe to our YouTube as well. We're starting to put more videos on there. I just published two uh, Mero videos. Um, one is showing you how to do the rounded corners, and it's a lot slower, a lot more in depth. And then the other one is something else. Um, oh, it's how to do the Velcro. That's what it is. Gotcha. All so, right. Well, and you uh, did the wrong flashes. <laughs> okay. So that's going to type in. Because we can't <laughs> do this right, apparently. So it, it's late. We have work to do. We, we're sure you have work to do. We know that what Suzanne has to go buy a laser now. Um, <laughs> Mark is going to go buy a marrow machine. So. Yeah. There you go. Oh, I didn't show the blue one. So I guess that'll have to be a different live. Yep. All so right. Today. Well, I think we'll go ahead and close it out. Yeah, I think so. I, I'm not going to ramble on anymore. All right. Well, we've got Matt Enderly from Patch Phrase, and I'm Jeff Fuller from Folder Embroidery Works, and we're both here representing the Embroidery Nerd. We'd like to thank you guys for hanging out with us, and we'll catch you next time. See ya.